السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الحمد للہ ونستعینه ونستغفره ونعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا ومن سیئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا نضل له ومن يدلله فلا حادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد dear brothers and sisters of the manifestation of the power of allah there is a fact that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken two things two things which are exactly the same but he has preferred one of them over the others allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and preferred certain beings over other beings even though they belong to the same species same type right his subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings and barakah are more on some compared to the others and the hikmah and wisdom behind it is known only to him azza wa jal it is beyond our understanding and we don't need to delve into something that we will never understand literally the meaning of baraka is an increase an increase in the blessings so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as i was saying has chosen some creations over the others some are more blessed have more baraka compared to others he has chosen some people over other people he has chosen the prophets over other people the prophets are not like any of the rest of us right similarly the sahaba they are much higher level compared to the rest of us a non sahabi is not like how a sahabi is similarly the scholars are not like the non scholars there is more baraka more blessings in some way or the other the same thing applies not only to the human beings it also applies even to places right places of this world some are above the others makkah is not like any other place in the world madina is not like any other place in the world allah has chosen them has preferred them over other places of the world even objects allah has preferred some over the other the water of zamzam that is chosen about the rest of the waters of the world right you cannot equate as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said there is no food like zamzam and what happens when we see zamzam right somebody has brought zamzam from saudi arabia oh, there is an excitement eagerness ah i can you give me some right can i have a sip of it can i just put it on myself there is baraka there is an understanding it's from the sunnah because allah has made it more valuable than the rest of the waters and the same applies to time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed some time compared to other times why is that some days over other days some nights over other nights more blessings if every month was exactly the same if every month was exactly the same where is the motivation 
where's the eagerness to do better to grab something to get an opportunity it's not going to be the same how can you do more good deeds specifically for a particular month the way we are doing it in ramadan how are these nights that we are staying up more blessed than the others because there is more baraka there is more blessing i want that i want to grab that i want to do good deeds so that i can get more reward for it so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen some months over the other months and ramadan is the king of all the months right the top one the best of them all king of the months and within that king of the month that single night of laylatul qadr that is the crown of the king right if ramadan is the king laylatul qadr is the crown on top of the king's head that is the value of laylatul qadr the blessed nature of it there is no night across the whole year that can compare in any way to laylatul qadr this blessed nature that it has this laylatul qadr the blessing of it the baraka in it is so much that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided a complete surah about it complete chapter focused talking about laylatul qadr to us human beings and jinn right he did it that for us whole surah to show the importance of one single night laylatul qadr and what do we see in that first verse itself what do we see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr straight away to the topic he's hitting the point straight away talking about that night straight away laylatul qadr shows you the importance of it all how important it is and at the same time there are two other things that he is emphasizing he subhanahu wa taala is emphasizing the coming down of the holy quran and he is emphasizing the coming down of allah's blessings at the same time in anzalnahu this has come down in that night in which night laylatul qadr the month of ramadan is the month in which the quran was revealed right the whole month 29 days 30 days whatever it might be the whole month became blessed because of the quran being revealed in it one book and the whole month is blessed then what can you think about the night the very night on which the quran was was revealed what will you think about that what will you say about that this night is like no other just think about it the book that blessed the whole month the very night what would be its value ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhu has said about this night on the laylatul qadr that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically sent down the holy quran physically the holy quran came down from the lawh al mahfuz the preserved tablet in which everything is written right from day 1 to day there is no end right everything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written in it from that lawh al mahfuz allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically sent down the holy quran till that last heaven that last sky that we see the sama wa dunya right the sky of this world he sent it down to that so physically and then why did he send it down there so that these words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in closer proximity to us it's closer to us now allah is trying to get as close to us as possible and then over the course of the next 23 years what happens 
Jibreel alayhi salam brings down the revelation from that sama of dunya to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the course of the 23 years. And as most of us are aware, that first revelation that comes down, Iqra, read, right? That happened on Laylatul Qadr. That happened on Laylatul Qadr. Imagine the status of the night. Just imagine the status of the night. The words of the Holy Quran coming down for the first time, being brought by the best of the angels to the best of humankind. On the best of the nights, in the best of the months. Subhanallah. There is no equal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And what will make you know what Laylatul Qadr is? As I was mentioning the other day, Qadr has many meanings. One of the unique things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, this Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Laylatul Qadr. It is one of the unique things for us. We do fasting, we do siyam. This is not something that is unique to us. This is not something that is unique to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his ummah. Previous people also did it. They fasted. They have different rules around fasting, but they did fast. Salah, that is not unique to us. Other prophets, their ummahs have prayed. Zakah, that is not unique to us. Previous ummahs have done that. Even parts of the hajj are not unique to us. Ibrahim alayhi salam and his ummah did it. There are other prophets, their ummahs did it. Certain parts of it at least, they practiced it. So it is not unique to us. It is not unique to this ummah. But the blessings of Laylatul Qadr, that is unique to us. Because the Quran did not come down to any other ummah. That is the blessing. That is this ummah. That is us. Alhamdulillah. The scholars have given various reasons for this. Right? They have one of the weak opinions, there is a slightly weakness in the hadith that I'm about to mention, is that the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa lives for 60, 70, 80 years. Right? Maximum. Not, not long enough. So how can you potentially compete with the ummas that used to live for hundreds of years? Thousands of years? How do you expect to compete? We can't compete. And according to that narration, the Prophet ﷺ had this concern. How can my ummah, how can my people compete with the people of the past? And according to that, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically gave us one night for every year of your life in which if you spend it while worshipping you can cover up a lifetime's worth of worship subhanallah that is where you are getting the equation of 83 plus years of a thousand months and beyond for every year that you live basically if we worship for that night we collect that many years ago. Many additional years of worshipping. Just written in our books. That is the essence of Baraka. This is the blessing. Right? An increase of 83.33 years in one night. Increase. Baraka. Blessings. Gone up suddenly. The time is blessed. And you can get more out of that time. If the time is not blessed, you get less out of it. Because it is blessed, you get more out of it. So this Laylatul Qadr, this one night, stretch it. Stretch it and grab those 83.33 years out of it. Get the reward for it. 
get the worship out of it because that is the height of baraka as far as time is concerned one night and zoom so much i can write down in my book so qadr one of the primary interpretations of it is that it is zu sha'nin azim zu sha'nin azim it is a grand night it has a grand status it is a night of respect laylatul qadr is the night of respect it is the night of glory the night of majesty we cannot understand what it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place in the holy quran has mentioned it as a mubarak night mubarak night most blessed night and there is no night in the time frame that we know of that can equate to it that can be more mubarak that can be more blessed than laylatul qadr now with regards to this respect there are two opinions one of the opinion is that the night itself is respectable very respectable night and the other opinion is which is very interesting is that the person who worships in this night gains respect in the eyes of others that is another opinion a person who worships in this night gets raised to a level where he is respected by others so this is a majestic night this is a blessed night let us be that person let us be those people who worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can be raised in respect so that we can be called as respectable people and this res- being called respectable people is not in the eyes of others let's be clear about that this is about being called respectable people in the eyes of none other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why wouldn't you want to be that person why wouldn't you want to climb this ladder which is so easy to climb right climb up in the ranks in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no other time in the year will give you that this is potentially one of those nights that is going to give us that this is the effort that we are trying to put into it may allah accept it of us another meaning of qadr is with regards to it being the pillar of iman iman is belief our faith what do you believe in it is often taught to younger children five pillars of islam but islam are acts there are six pillars of iman that go with it as well because that is the true belief if things are done only the pillars of islam are acted upon without having any iman that person cannot be called a muslim you need to be doing the pillars of islam but believing in the pillars of iman and of those six pillars of iman the sixth of those is called qadr this is that qadr that we are talking about the qadr the predestiny the belief that all good and all bad in our lives is coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is written it has it has to happen you accept it as it happens and you believe in it that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written it down for you the good as well as the bad that is the toughest part of qadr to accept when something bad happens to you and you have to accept that it may be coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predestination it is the night of predestination this night of decree when all of this is getting decided of what is going to happen that is the qadr and this is one of the primary blessings right as we stay up 
through these nights hoping that we are achieving that qadr we are achieving that blessing as the qadr as the fate comes down and we believe in it we are in a position where we are worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy quran on this night every single decision is decided it does not literally mean that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides now of what is going to happen to you what it means is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to announce that decision to the angels to the angels this is what is going to happen for the upcoming year because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's going to happen to each and every one of us before he even created anything at all he knew it all he is just announcing it to his creations the other species the angels that look this is what is going to happen to these people and these jinns over the coming year this is their qadr the angels are being told about this on an annual basis well even the angels just like us we work in different companies what happens you have your divisions you have your committees sub committees right management committee whatever it is you divide yourself to make the work happen similarly the angels also divide themselves you do this bit i am doing this bit they are told their task on this night this is what you have to do for this year you have to make sure such and such person survives the whole year whatever it might be so these these tasks are being given out they are being dished out to these angels on laylatul qadr being announced who is going to be dying this year it is being announced who is going to be forgiven by allah subhanahu wa taala this year it is being decided whose long term sickness is suddenly going to be cured this year whose musiba is going to be lifted away it is also going to be announced who is going to fall into musiba as a way of testing the person right this is the night where all these decisions are going to be made or being decisions are going to be announced every single decision is going to be announced the simplest of simple decisions to the most powerful of decisions and let us be clear brothers and sisters there is no doubt that for some of us this is the last ramadan this might well be our last laylatul qadr this might well be the last blessed night that we are living who knows we'll survive two days later or not and that information that kind of information is being announced on these nights on the night when laylatul qadr is whose musiba gets lifted who gets more musiba so that they can be tested by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every major announcement of our lives right a job for which you have given an interview right somebody might have written a major exam waiting for the results right you tense about it how do you feel how do you feel if something is going to be announced promotion coming up maybe yeah i don't know what's going to happen potential wedding i don't know whether i'm getting my id or not i have plans let's see what happens right you make all these plans but you're tensed you're worried you're nervous uh ye hone wala hai what's going to happen how how is it going to work out right it's natural it's natural for us human beings to feel this way for simple worldly things we feel this way laylatul qadr is much more than any exam any job any marriage let us be clear about that it is about our life and our death it is about our hereafter it is about our jannah 
and our akhirah how should you be feeling then shouldn't you be as nervous as anxious as concerned as worried aspects of this world make you nervous and worried but what how should you feel when it is coming to your life and death your jannah and akhirah where is that worryingness now shouldn't we be standing in prayer worried about that part think about it there is no other way you should be spending such a night other than worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make yourself think this way get that worry out now yes i'm anxious what's going to happen my life my future my jannah my akhirah i need it i want it ya allah give it to me right pray to him beg to him because he alone can answer it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah make it easy for us another meaning of qadar is restriction restricted so laylatul qadr is a night of restriction in that sense a night which is completely packed up and why is this night restricted in this way that i am mentioning it is because there is no space no space to move around there is enough space right what am i talking about the matter of fact is that there are angels coming down on this night and they are leaving no space these angels are leaving no space they have packed up they have stacked up they have filled every possible space not the way we know space but the way they know space yeah it's a different dimension our imagination is beyond that if tonight is laylatul qadr we have angels all around us and it is packed we might not feel it because the dimensions that we think from are different so night of restriction as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us the heavens not a hand span an angel is in qiyam in ruku or in sujood as i was mentioning the other day completely filled up not just in ramadan every single moment of life it is packed up the heavens they are completely worshiping allah all the time and those heavens are creaking with their sounds of glorifying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if this is the way how it is outside of ramadan what about the way it is in ramadan and what about the way it is on laylatul qadr just imagine all of those angels coming down onto this earth heavens are supposed to be larger than the earth right and angels packed with them and all those angels coming down where's the space the quantity is massive as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no one can count the army of allah and that army is talking about the angels no one can count them other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself it is beyond anybody else's capacity so absolutely if that army of uncountable army is going to come down there is going to be no space and then wama adra kama laylatul qadr what will make you realize what is laylatul qadr and why has allah framed this question in such a way he has framed it in such a way because there is there is no possibility that we you and i can fully understand and comprehend what laylatul qadr is some of us who are parents when we are talking to our children and trying to explain to them some things which is simply beyond their understanding at their certain ages my 6 year old was asking me the other day rules of cricket how do i explain it to him so i had to go down to his level right somebody throws a ball somebody hits with the bat and you get points 
Everybody else just goes and picks up the ball. That's all you can explain to a six-year-old. I cannot go into the nitty and gritty details of the game. Because they are too little. It's beyond their understanding. Right? They are six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, ten-year-olds, every age. There is a certain thing that you can say. You cannot tell them everything. Because they will not understand. They don't have the capacity to understand. The mind has not grown up as much as it should. So similarly, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Your minds are not grown up enough. When I tell to that child, you are saying, how do I explain to this guy? What can I tell you what cricket is? Same way Allah is telling us. What can I tell you what لَيْلَةُ Qadr is? Your minds are never going to understand. You are incapable of it. You can never appreciate it, how much and what kind of a night it is. You will never understand the Qadr of Laylatul Qadr. And then the following ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us two reasons to understand at our level, at our limited level. And he says, subhanallah, he says, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min al-fishar. To bring out down to your understanding, just consider it better than a thousand months. Easy for you? Just grab that. Here, give thousand rupees, right? Whatever it might be. That, that's your that's all you can understand. Just take this and go on. Take this at least. Grab this at least. Because beyond that you cannot understand. You don't have the capacity. The word Laylatul Qadr appears three times in this surah in the first three ayats itself. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Wa ma adrakama Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayru min al fishar. Three times Laylatul Qadr Allah again is saying, There you go, there you go, there you go. This night is beyond your understanding. This is what it is. Laylatul Qadr. It is showing you the importance of Laylatul Qadr. The concept of it all. So Allah is repeating again and again, thrice. Does He need to repeat to us? Allah is saying, but He is repeating. Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. Understand, understand, understand. So again, I pick up the example of a child. You tell them once, twice, thrice to push it into them, right? Allah is pushing it into us. Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. Don't forget what it is. There is one common greed of mankind. And that greed is a long life. Right? To do whatever you want to do. Live longer. I want more time. Right? Use it well. This same greed was something that made our father Adam alayhi salam eat that fruit from that tree. Because what did Iblis tell him? What did Iblis promise him upon eating that fruit? Eternal life. And that greed got him. And it is a greed that we have as well. Of a long life. But put it in a different perspective. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Use and stretch this night of Laylatul Qadr to grab those thousand months. The bare minimum thousand months. It is khayrum min al-fishar, better than a thousand months. Grab that at least. Take the blessings, take the baraka out of them. Get the reward for that. At least you can get that. Why not? Right? Right? We will never be able to understand what it is. But take what you can. Take at least the thousand months and more. Right? I go back to that child again. Start playing the game. Get the small points what you can. And then slowly they learn. The more and more we do these Laylatul Qads, the more and more we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
the concept of it all becomes clearer to us. The love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this religion grows upon us. We get closer to him and we get closer to that akhirah that we so desire. A thousand months. Better than 83.33 years. As I mentioned, not many of us are going to live till that age. And let us suppose, even if you do live that age, what happens? Are you going to be worshipping all through those 83.33 years of time? Where is the time for your childhood? The time for your eating? The time for your drinking? The time that you sleep? The time that you work? The time that you spend in pleasure with your friends? How much do you spend it in worship? How much? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us that one night every year. That potential one night that might be tonight. And you can return with a bonus of a thousand plus months. All the blessings better than a 83.33 years. Bonus package. Right? A bonus package which is longer than your life. Why not? Why don't I want that? Right? Allah is dishing it out. Annual bonus. You just have to stand. What else happens on that night? Tanazzalul malaika. The angels come down. As I mentioned, majority of them come down. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and we cannot imagine the quantity that are going to be coming down. Their mere presence of those angels, of, those, of that species that does not know to do anything other than worship Allah, that species being here with us is enough of a blessing around the night. Full of those species. And then Allah says, وَالرُّوحُ fiha." Not just the angels, even Jibreel alayhi salam himself is coming down. The one who was responsible for bringing us the message in the first place. Iqra. Jibreel alayhi salam brought it down. And he's coming down on this one night every year to be with us. The blessings around, the baraka around. Imagine. Bi idni rabbihim min kulli amr. And what do all of these angels coming down do? They come with the command of Allah. With all the affairs that have been they have been given. Min kulli amr. For the whole upcoming year. All the orders. You are doing this. You are staying with so and so for the rest of the year. Okay. Each and every one of those angels are being given their duties for the coming year. And salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. The concept of peace in the night. Right? That is being emphasized. There is peace all around. You are protected from the harm and evil in this night. You are protected. But not for long. Only till dawn. Only a few hours. Not too long. Take the chance. Worship along. For a short period of time. The benefits of these night, of this particular night is so much that if we have a little bit of wisdom. If we are wise enough, then you would not let go of this yearly bonus. Why not? Why will you let it go of? Aren't we intelligent enough? Aren't we capable enough? Aren't we wise enough? All you have to do to grab it is just stand in line. Right? Just worship the night and get the bonus. 
be wise enough utilize the time stand in qiyam be in ruku be in sujood keep saying the zikr keep saying the duas recite the quran worship in whatever form you like no fixed rule worship in whatever form you like but be wise enough use it it's not like in a company where only certain people are going to get the bonus not everybody here everybody there is no competition you do your bit you get your bonus you get your reward and remember what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said nothing changes qadar other than dua so make sure you're doing lots and lots of dua on this night make sure you're sincere in it make sure you're trying to influence the qadar through your duas and make sure you recite the dua that i have mentioned earlier which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told aisha radhiyallahu anha allahumma innaka afun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni so this might very well be our last ramadan this might very well be our last laylatul qadr let us make sure that it is the best ramadan that you have ever spent in your life let us make sure that it is the best laylatul qadr that you have ever spent in your life let us make sure that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all the fasting all the siyam that we have done throughout this month let us hope and pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts them that he accepts our qiyam that he accepts our intentions and purifies them and keeps them pure from the evils of shaitan let us pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us among those who are able to grab this laylatul qadr and worship the whole night through and write it down for us let us pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us all our sins because he is the ghafurur rahim wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin